Welcome back to Shop Only Garage. Today, we are working on this Soul EV that stands for Electronical Vehicle. And we are going to be replacing the battery pack in this. Uh, the battery pack has a state of health of 49% and Kia says that ain't good enough. Um, I think anything under 54% a state of health is a bad battery pack and we're going to be replacing it. We're going to be dropping the bottom of this vehicle out and we're going to be pulling the thing apart and we're going to be putting new uh, battery packs in there and um, I'll show you um, how that works. So let's go. Some of you may have seen this vehicle before on um, Shop For Me Garage uh, Facebook page. Uh, it was part of the uh, disgusting people's most disgusting vehicles, and uh, yeah, this is this is why. If you see that, that is a dirt floor, and it is completely disgusting. And there are ants living in here. At least there were before this thing is set for a couple months waiting for uh, the battery pack to come in. Now, I'll show you the what we're looking at right here and, and why the customer's complaining that the battery won't take a charge uh, when they charge it up, or it won't take a, a good enough charge. Uh, basically, what they're complaining is they're not getting enough range off of the battery. And I'll show you this. Let me get my light to turn off. So, Right there, it only shows that there's 19 miles and we have at least 60% um, charge on the battery. Um, now, the, these, uh, this is a 2017, so uh, they didn't have a lot of range on the batteries to begin with, even brand new. I think they only had like 120 miles possibly, and it depends on how you drive. You know, you got a lead foot in one of these, they ain't gonna go very far, you know, and if you want AC, oh, that's not gonna go that far. But I mean, it should get definitely a better than 19 miles off of a 60% battery. Um, so yeah, that that's, we're gonna fix that. And right here is the battery pack. Um, of course, it's in the box. There, there's two batteries in here, and I'll show you more about those once we get this box open. And this is uh, the lift that we're gonna use to put underneath the vehicle and drop that battery pack down. And it is, uh, this is a heavy duty lift. This thing can lift a lot. Um, these battery packs, uh, they're pretty, pretty heavy, so. Um, let me get this thing um, on the lift. Um, I need to uh, disable the high voltage system first. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna disconnect the, the battery here and then let's, let's see how disgusting this is. I, didn't even, I haven't even looked at it yet. Uh, unlock the door. So uh, I guess it's not that bad. So right in here, this is in the back seat. Right in here is the safety plug. You gotta pull this off, get a couple 10 millimeter bolts and uh, pull the safety plug out. And uh, once we do that, uh, we can get uh, underneath the vehicle and we will check the, um, to make sure that we ain't got any more power, you know? And of course, we need to do that with safety gloves so we don't get electrocuted. And um, I've done uh, a work something like this before, not pulling a battery pack out. This is the first time on the channel um, pulling the battery pack out, although I have replaced many battery packs in these Soul EVs. Um, but uh, I did uh, do a, um, a video uh, where I talk more about the safety and stuff of um, working on these vehicles because, you know, they can kill you, you know. And I'll put a link, you know, right up here, right, right here. I think, yeah, I'll put a link, there it is. And um, yeah, go and check that video out, it's on um, Kia Nero. Um, but uh, come on, let's, let's get into this.
I have never seen one this disgusting. There are cobwebs all over the place. Stuff living in here. No telling what it's gonna look like once we pull this down and open the case. And all this dirt and everything. And clearly the customer lives on a dirt road. But um, the dirt inside the vehicle, I, I, I don't understand that. I mean, you know, vacuum it, you know? Um, and the ants living in there, uh, I mean, are they friends or what? Anyway, uh, we need to get this off and test this. So I'm gonna get ready for that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and I'm gonna test it. This has been deemed safe, and um, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, these connectors, they did not want to come off, you know, because of all the dirt and stuff that was stuck up in them, uh, but I got them off. Um, now, we just got these bolts right here, and there's a couple up in here, and then the same thing on this side, and we're, I'm going to get that. Uh, that lift right there underneath here and clean this up on the floor a little bit and get that lift under here lift it up onto it disconnect those bolts and then we got two ground straps here's one right here and then there should be one right here too and uh we'll get those off and we'll drop the whole thing down we can move it out from underneath here and uh that's when the fun begins so let's get to that right now
Okay, here we can see the, this looks like on the top, and all along here, we got a total of, it's like 58 nuts and bolts. We gotta take off, we gotta split this thing open, uh, including those right there, and there's uh, your plug that's in the center of your vehicle. This has a venting system, and there is a blower that sucks air out of here so it's uh, air cooled this these sit underneath your uh, the the driver's and passenger seat and you can see all that junk down in there usually you find uh, some uh, french fries that's <laughs> usually what I find most is french fries sitting in here uh, you can see uh, the customer has a lot of junk up in there, especially on this side. This is the passenger side floorboard underneath the passenger front seat. And that's where the plug goes and this is where the vent is. There's a blower up there that sucks air through it. So need to start taking all these off one at a time so there are a couple of these that are uh, what you call the um, grounding bolts so whenever we take them out we need to make sure that we get the grounding bolts in the exact spot where they belong um, there is a lot of dirt I've never seen one this dirty before uh, and I wonder what it's gonna look like on the inside so get this off and see what see what we got Let's do that right now. Okay, there you go. These are the battery cells. We got 14, 10, 10, and 14. 14, 10, 10, and 14. So we got 28, 48, 96, 96 cells all together. So how do you know that it's safe? Well, it's not completely safe. You know, we still got power and ground right here. This is a, your power relay assembly. This is your um, battery management control module. And what this is, it's in series. So we got the negative coming here. These are all established in series. And then we got a positive coming in through this thing. And that is attached to this. We got them, this thing hooked up and then it goes back into this side. This is negative and they're attached in series and then you got your positive coming out so we got everything right here in series and it is physically disconnected through this so this has a physical disconnection whenever you pull this thing out so unless you touch this at the same time that you're touching this you know you won't get electrocuted of course right now we still got these two attached right here but just as long as you're not touching them both at the same time. Of course, you can touch both of these at the same time because they're disconnected right here. All right, so you would actually have to touch this and that at the same time to, you know, get any kind of a, a jolt or anything. Um, this thing is nasty. I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, I've never ever seen spider webs or animals living here. That looks like a roach. I've never seen animals living in inside this um, ever and I mean there's there's cobwebs inside here and this is a seal and I don't know if you can tell all that that's not dirt that's dead ants yeah that is ants on the bottom there um, so what we're going to do is we need to disconnect these cables, pull this vent out, pull this cable, this um, thing off of here, and 
this uh this these cells these come all off, off in one piece we got um a bunch of bolts you know in, in here and down inside here all those bolts have to come out and these will come off I, there is a, a harness that will connect to this um and we'll use the uh, engine cherry picker to pick it up and uh so when we open up this box right here it's gonna have those cells so uh, that's what I need to do next. Uh, pull this open and make sure this thing is the right way so that we can lift the uh, one pack off, move the thing, move it over, set it on the ground, grab this pack, you know, and move that back, move this over, set it on there, and then we'll do the opposite on the other side. And, it, and, and we only have one of those harnesses, so we just got to keep switching them back and forth. So. Um, uh, let's uh, get this thing open and uh, let's look at this. All right, let's get this box open. Let's see what we got here. Opening an Indiana Jones crypt. Okay, so we got two packs, and I don't know which way they're facing. So if they're facing the wrong way, I'd like to spin it around because it's just going to be easier to get them out. Okay, this one's facing the right way. So. I'll show you what that looks like. It's so, or is it? Uh, let me see. Yeah, this is the back. So, I'm gonna have to uh, turn this thing around. So, let me turn it around. So, this is the other side. Of course, I don't know which way that way is that one is facing. So uh, we are going to want to replace the other one first. So uh, let me get this spun around. Okay, and once we start moving these around, you'll see why it matters which way this case is facing because you don't want to be spinning these these things around on that on that hoist so yes this is the back okay so this is the passenger side so this is the way we want it uh, so this will be the first one that we replace so uh, let me go and get that harness so we go and get the harness and I will show you how we hook this up. The first thing we need to do is we have to take this off. This comes off, this has to come off. And uh, we have a couple little connections we need to get off. We've, of course, we need to get this power relay. So this is the power relay assembly. And if this, the good thing about this, and this is the old, I guess older technology or whatever. Um, if this power relay right here were to accidentally fuse together for some reason and it would not um, cut the power going to the vehicle, um, in the end, we pull this, this is a physical um, switch or whatever, and pull that out and it, it will shut off the power. So on the newer vehicles that have this little tiny connector that's by the battery, you disconnect it. That doesn't, it's not a physical switch. That tells a relay assembly to shut off the power. So if that relay assembly were fused and you pull that little tiny thing off, it's not gonna stop the power from the vehicle. So you actually have to go into the, um, the KDS and this 
um, circumstance um, and look at the vehicle, look at the, um, the data and make sure that it is actually disconnected before you do anything like this. Uh, this one, this is a physical disconnect. So, uh, so no problem, even if this power relay were fused, it wouldn't have any power because it's physically disconnected right here. So we need to disconnect this. Uh, we got uh, these connections right here. All these need to be disconnected. Everything going to this, this harness comes with it. So we get all that disconnected. And as you can see, there is a harness in here. And there's the rest of the harness down there. And right here goes to the, this is the uh, management, battery management system, ECU. So we need to disconnect that and um, disconnect those connectors right there. And of course, all these bolts right here, all of them, all the way around, even the ones on the inside. So. Uh, let me get that harness so you can see what that looks like and I already got the cherry picker sitting over there and um, I will show you what that looks like and then we'll start tearing this thing apart. Okay, here's, here's that harness. And it's gonna hook up just like this. Whew, the thing's heavy. I have to swap that around so it's in the right direction. Let's get this, start getting this apart. these bolts out right here uh, like half of the bolts for this one I got all the ones off from this one these right here are from the harness and it's what's gonna help us pick this pack up and where these go is right here you screw them in down there if you can get it started yeah so one goes there, another one over here. There is one right here in the middle. And there's another one right here. Get that on there. I have to tighten those all the way down. And then on the other end, and then one right here. And I'm gonna get that, uh, that harness over here, hook it up to these right here. And uh, we'll lift it up, pull it back. We'll move this thing over. And then we will set it over there on the floor. We'll pull the um, new um, 
packs, battery packs out. We'll move this harness from this all the way to that one. We'll grab it with the, uh, with the cherry picker, pull it all the way back, slide this out, then we'll put it on top of this. And then uh, <laughs> that's, that's how we do it. And then, um, then just, you know, rinse and repeat. We do the same thing, you know, for the other side. Um, only we'll probably uh, pick this battery pack up and set it over here on the floor so it's out of the way so that we can get the other side. And of course, you know, once we take the battery pack out, we set it on the floor, we get the new battery pack, we put it on here. We gotta go pick up the old battery pack and stick that back into the box. And then we start over. So uh, let me get this um, hooked up here and pulled off and see how that works. Okay, so before this thing is stuck. Okay. Okay, before I stick that battery pack into here, I need to get this wiring harness from underneath here. This goes to this pack right here. So I need to disconnect these. And I need to pull these tabs out all along here. Just rip them out of there. Because it's hard to get these out with the other battery pack in. And I got another one right there. Okay. So that's out of the way. And look at this. See all that? That's all dead ants. Whole thing. Just everywhere. Dead ants. I've never seen anything like this. Usually this place is super clean and you know it has air flowing through it. That's what cools the battery. Air cooled battery. So now we can drop that in here and get that bolted down and then we'll do the same thing with that other side. All right, just so you didn't know, there are these dowel pins right here to stick up and uh, allows the thing to pop right into place. So there's one over here on the inside. There's one right here, way down in there. There's one right here for the other side too. And then there's this one right here. So once you set it down, it sets down right into place and then all your bolt holes will line up because if they didn't, that would be a pain. So, and these things right here, I don't tighten these down all the way. I just kind of close them so that they won't pop off because they like to do that. 
like to pop off whenever you're first starting to lift it up and then you gotta let it down, hook it back up. So I just uh, close them enough so that they can't pop through here, right here like that. So let's pull this back. And that is pretty much it for this side. Gonna take all these off and then move that over, grab that other battery to sit on the floor, pull it back, move that over, set that old battery into that box, cover that up, and then we'll start the process on the other side. Just a bunch of moving these things around. I wish I had two of these harnesses, or at least, you know, another set of these, but you can't get these without getting this entire harness bracket thing. So, Oh, um, yeah, it's pretty expensive. So, um, I, to the point where I need to just keep moving these over and over and over and over and over and over. So, let me get this established on there and we'll move that over. other direction and in case you were wondering what this is right here this is a new harness that has to go on here right here so in this uh, vent in the back right here there's this cross harness that goes across here and that's what this is for I set that there to remember I have to replace it um, and what these are these uh, harnesses that are on the side there's these switches on the top of each of these uh, packs and if you know anything about lithium-ion batteries um, you know like the battery that's in your phone your laptop or whatever they get too hot you know or they start to go out they start to swell and whenever they swell um, that's it. these will do the same thing they'll start to swell they will um, push this switch and the switch, they're all connected in series and this is where that harness connects to and it goes all the way around to the other side. And uh, if that, that goes out, that swells, then uh, it will set a code and it will um, probably, I don't know for exactly for sure what it's gonna do. Uh, I know it's, it may, you know, limit, uh, put it into limp mode for a little while, but eventually it's gonna shut down um, because it doesn't want the battery to, to blow up, you know. Um, and uh, this is uh, it's still it's quite a bit of power that's 28.8 kilowatt hours that's 28.8 thousand watts of power so it's quite a bit um, so uh, let me get this thing swapped around the other way and we're gonna basically do the same thing we just did I'm gonna pull this um, get the rest of those bolts out of this thing right here I'm going to uh, lift it up and move it over and uh, then we're gonna move this over and I'm gonna set the battery pack on the floor over there and uh, come back this way move it and then we're gonna grab this battery pack right here and stick it on there so let's get to knocking it out
one thing to look at on uh, these new battery packs is right here going into the side of this one the one that's on the driver's side in the front there is a temperature sensor that slips in between the sails in there and it's, uh, it's probably about that long slips right inside the sail on uh, this old one you notice there is no, there's no temperature sensor in this no temperature sensor in this vehicle until this point where we're putting this new battery pack that is actually a product improvement um, uh, campaign or recall or something that uh, they came out with a little while back and it actually had been revised and revised um, as a matter of fact if you were replacing um, battery packs like this you had to replace these harnesses because the new harness the new battery packs didn't come with these um, and then there were some vehicles that we had to get in I think that had battery packs before I'm not sure exactly what the qualifications are for that recall but um, we actually had to pull this whole thing apart and replace these harnesses in here and uh, with uh, and the harness on this side had that sensor so uh, just something to let you know if you have one of these vehicles uh, you might check and see if uh, you have that uh, recall um, especially if you've had battery packs replaced in the past on it uh, that um, product improvement recall might um, you might qualify for it I'm not exactly sure um, we will be once we get all this together everything back in we will be reprogramming this module right here um, and we got to program it anyway to let the module know that we got brand new batteries in it so let's get this thing put together Two new battery packs in. Let's see, three man battery, three manufactured, it's labeled all over, three manufactured. Um, so um, I just need to get all the bolts in all the way around. I got all these bolts right here. A bunch more bolts. Uh, we get all these bolts in, we get these uh, harnesses right here hooked up. To the battery management uh, ECU and then uh, we'll get the um, get this uh, piece over here hooked up this one right here and then that we need to get this uh, harness moved over to this and switch out these harnesses this has to go back in the box so uh, yeah if you don't put that if you don't put that old harness in the box then uh, they won't give you credit for that return. And that's an expensive battery pack. Um, so yeah, that's how important that harness is. They wanna make sure that thing was replaced and you have to get that old, batter, that old harness put into that box so that when it's returned, they find it in there and then they can give you credit for uh, the uh, battery. Um, so uh, let me start bolting this thing down and uh, let's uh, get her done already. Get this thing taken off. Well, come on, get out of there. Oh, 
old harness. Stick this down on here. Like that. And get these screws in here. Or screws, these nuts. This is just like a big vacuum right here. Vacuums air through the system. And there's a lot of cobwebs in there too. I've never seen cobwebs in this thing. Okay, a new harness going in. Got the blue with the blue and the red with the red. Just pop this on real quick. the red right here red right here plug it in like that Thing sits down on there got everything hooked up this thing sits down on there something like that and we got the blue with the blue and this right here It's going to go right there on top and then we'll put the cover on that and so make sure that we got all this hooked up make sure that they had all the wiring hooked up properly at the factory uh, just kind of glance through it we got all this hooked up we still need to hook the power relay up right here but we're going to make sure that this is hooked up pushed in properly because once we seal this thing down we don't want to have to open it up that would just be a waste of time okay so we got what is it negatory over here pository here we got these nuts sitting in the pile of dead ants right here that one's trying to sneak underneath yeah oh, there it is and get these tightened up That is it. Um, okay, now I'll uh, just uh, put the lid back on and get all these, you know, 251.8 bolts on and um, get everything put back together. This has um, these cover things. And of course those are filled with nastiness. But you see every once in a while there's a spot like that right there. And this is an actually, actually a grounding point. So on the bolts, they came out of it. This big pile of bolts here. Um, <laughs> yeah. These are the ones that go around the plug, so I just set those separately. But I started looking through these bolts and I'm gonna have to separate them. This one right here, this is a grounding bolt. And see how it's kind of has that twist to it? You know, here's another one. Has a twist to it. This one, no twist. So we got a combination of nuts and bolts. We got 
regular bolts and we got twisty bolts. These twisty bolts are the grounding bolts. So, um, don't know why it matters, but it matters. Um, there's another one right here. So, uh, I don't know why it matters, but it matters. So, uh, this, um, top cover has to be grounded to the bottom cover. So everything's all grounded. And then of course, that's going to be bolted in. And then you got the, the ground straps on the side that need to be grounded right here. There's one on this side, there's one on the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on, just start putting all those bolts. I'll go through those twisty bolts. Those go in uh, specific spots. Got to make sure they're in the right spot. And then just tighten everything down, you know, including this right here. This is where those other bolts were when that cover goes on. And uh, I'll just make sure that I don't have anything sitting in here because once we close it up, we don't want to open it back up again. So I just grab all my tools and start putting her together. the crypt. Get this thing closed up. Doesn't need to be open for another thousand years. Oh, that's the wrong way. Let's pop these things in. That's it. The crypt is closed. And these things, I got all, you know, 1,521 and a half bolts and nuts put on. Some of these had uh, little rocks and stuff that had fallen down in there and they didn't want to go. And I just ran her down. So it's good and tight. It's closed so now we can move this thing into place and get it bolted back up to the vehicle so let's do that now Let's get this stuff hooked up. We can hook it up. We don't need any gloves. We know that it's safe. Let's make sure that there's no dirt in that 
junk in there. Pop these things in. Put this bad boy on. <clears throat> this cable is hard to twist. I mean, it is, it is stiff. It's stiff and stout. All right. Now I can finish putting the cover back on and uh, we'll be done with uh, underneath here already. All right, we got this thing put together. Let's get this in here and let's see what it does. Plug this thing in. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the battery here. Okay, and just for the heck of it, let's turn it on, let's see what we got. So that is still showing 19 miles and 60%, um, about 60% charge. So we need to uh, update we need to update the control module so that it knows that it has a new battery pack um, and so that it can start all over. So I'm going to get the KDS, hook it up, and we're probably going to have to do that through manual mode and uh, let it know, hey, we got brand new battery packs here, and then we'll see what that thing says. All right, I am going to um, do this um, programming in manual mode. So uh, what I'm doing is this. Um, this 379 uh, PS EV battery pack replacement um, and BMS uh, upgrade after battery pack replacement. And I, I have to pick uh, what the the uh, part number is. And I've actually got, a, I looked it up so I could get the password because you need a password. So it is the E4000. So, oops, I just hit the wrong thing. So battery pack replacement, E4000, hit upgrade. It's going to want to know what the password is. The password is 4000. Hit OK. And it should do the upgrade. Now, you don't want to be doing uh, manual upgrades in these unless you have the numbers and the password. Even if you have a password and you go into the wrong thing, it will actually program the wrong program into the ECU and that can cause all kinds of problems, all kinds of issues and stuff. So you want to make sure that you have the actual thing. This is based off of a uh, battery pack part number. Um, the th battery pack part number is 37513-E4000 and it's actually not E4000 uh, because this battery pack has been, uh, it's been superseded the part number has been superseded a couple times so i had to actually go in and look what the original battery pack uh part number would be for this vehicle and um it uh, showed that it was the e4000 so that was the only way that i could actually get the proper uh part number or uh proper um password that's what i'm trying to say um so uh, I'm going to let this uh, thing do this upgrade and it, this may take a little while and uh, once I'm done with that then I'll get you back and we can see what this thing says. Okay, so I got the uh, thing updated and you can see it is actually sitting at 72% and uh, 80 miles on the dial. So 80 miles uh, left, I am going to drive it, make sure I don't have any uh, codes popping up. And if that's the case, uh, or if there are no codes, hopefully there aren't, then I'm gonna stick it on the charger and let the thing charge up. So let me go test drive and see what happens. Okay, huh. we definitely have an issue with this battery pack that I just put in. Um, I mean, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Has this code 
setting and the battery management system is P1B74 for high voltage battery voltage sensor circuit active and that says that there's something wrong with the um, battery cells are not they're not um, doing their thing uh, some of them and if I look at the battery cell there's like this for instance this uh, cell voltage 8 is at zero and you got some, a lot of them at 3.9 there's another one at zero uh, number 15 I can go through here's a bunch of them at zero and those battery those cells their voltages so yeah there's definitely some kind of an issue um, and at the beginning of this uh, the customer I mean you saw how uh, it didn't have any range on it and there's been quite a few uh, technical service bulletins that have come out and even uh, that uh, campaign that I was talking about which this one does not was not covered under that campaign uh, where we replaced the harness on the battery pack or you might replace a battery pack assembly or you replace the harness and the battery pack assembly and the battery management uh, control unit uh, this one didn't fall within that as a matter of fact uh, there was one bulletin that it fell under we contacted techline you always have to contact techline in order to get a battery pack um, author or um, ordered so we can't even order one without uh, authorization from techline and um, this one uh, we had gotten authorization we ordered it halfway through the order and sometimes it takes months for those to come in halfway through the order they canceled the order and said that we needed to get the vehicle back in the customer had this at home i guess they weren't driving very far had to get the vehicle back in and recheck it and then reopen a tech line case to reorder another battery pack because the battery pack uh, some kind of new bulletin came out within between the time that we ordered the battery pack and the battery pack that never came in would have come in anyway long story short I'm gonna have to contact TechLine again on this and find out what is going on this is a brand new battery I mean, that's I put the new one in right I mean you saw me I didn't put an old take the old one out and put the old one back in did I I no I know that I didn't <laughs> Oh my god, so it looks to me like we're gonna have to break this case back open. Um, I need to contact TechLine and no telling how many days that's gonna be. And then if um, we need to reorder a battery pack, it's gonna be months probably. So, anyway, I will, um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know what happens and maybe a couple days from now, but I will let you know. Well, truth going on and being told, it's the next day. And I uh, contacted the tech line, and uh, turns out that we should have replaced the battery management system. Um, uh, there was some misunderstanding, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, that part is on order, and um, I uh, will get into what happened and why, you know. It, we didn't put the battery management system in in the first place. We're gonna have to crack this case back open and uh, go ahead and do that and do some uh, reprogramming and stuff. But this video is already long enough, so I'm just gonna uh, cut it off here. Um, and this will be a part one, and I will do a part two when that uh, battery management system comes up, comes in, and we will get this thing up. We'll drop it back down, break it back open, and uh, replace that module. And uh, I will explain more as to what happened and uh, why we have to do this. And uh, in the next video, I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one.